This video is part of a series of videos on LC3 programming. Specifically, in this video, we're going to be looking at the concept of arrays. Um, array, an array is a data structure um, that allows us to maintain a collection of items as opposed to a single item. So for us, the definition of an array is a collection of elements of the same data type. Which means when we look at an array in memory, we will see that it's not one item, one integer or one character, but it's a collection. So each of these is one item one item here, the next item and next item, and we have a collection of them. And they're, all, they're put sequentially in memory, sequentially meaning that they're one after the other in memory. And so if I have an array of, let's say, inputs, then we will think of this as the first element, the second element, and that's the nth element. So we will see uh, how we can work with arrays and what's the motivation behind arrays uh, by taking an example that we've done before but we will uh, extend it. So so the problem that I'm going to be working on here is the problem statement which will motivate the use of arrays. And it's building off of a problem statement I, I visited in a different video, earlier video on debugging. Um, so the problem statement is simply this. I want to count the number of ones in each element of a set, or in our case, let's not call it a set, of an array of elements and what is more I want this result which is a count so in our case we will have let's say an array of inputs an array here an array of inputs that is given to us as inputs and we want to produce some outputs and we will write in these outputs the corresponding counts. In other words, if we have, let's say, the number, uh, let's take a simple example. If we have the number, let's say, uh, x8000, then this output corresponding to that will be a 1. Uh, let's take another example. Let's say I have a x, the next location is an x8001 which means there's a one in the most significant bit and the one in the least significant bit, then the output for that should be a two and so on. So if there are, um, let's assume for us right now, there are, let's say there are 10 elements in my, in my array. So the last element let's assume is happens to be an um, X F F F F. I'm just taking that as my last element. So the last elements output ought to be 16 because there are 16 ones in it. So that's the goal. So let's see how we're going to solve this. Um, I'm going to build off of a solution that we've already devised. Um, we've devised a solution in, in uh, earlier um, that will that allowed us to work on an array of or a single element and the intuition behind that was we have a single element and if you have a single element um, and we want to look at how it's how to find the the number of ones in it then we looked at the most significant bit which happens to be the sign bit and we said let's look at this bit and check whether it's a one or not if it's a one then this must be a negative number and if it's a positive or a, if it's a zero then it means that it's a zero or a positive number and we've used this logic where we're going to keep looking at that most significant bit and as we as we uh, process this we're going to be shift left shifting 
all the bits. So we left shift it, left shift it. If this was in register R1, we said R1 assign the value R1 plus R1, which will essentially left shift it. And then we re-ask the same question and we repeat this. So the algorithm for doing this was something we've already discussed in a previous video. So now I'm gonna take that that code and I'm going to extend it. So let's assume that we have some code which we already wrote and this code can solve the problem of this code. When you enter this code, we will have in a register R2, oh sorry, R1 in our case, R1 has a number and when, when we come out of this code, R2 has a count. So we're going to use this, this block of code which we already wrote and we're going to build around this. So what we're going to do now is uh, if, you get, if you remember our array was somewhere at this location which was at let's say in our case it was at x4000 and we have multiple array elements here. The first element is at x4000 and now I'm going to make my second element be at x4001 and so on and the last element in our case is going to be at 4009 which is at last element which is 10 elements and then we're going to make our output so this is our input array and our output array just to keep it simple our output array let's say we write it at x5000 and so this one will correspond to this guy will correspond to this guy and this guy will correspond to this guy and so on. So, so my logic then is to, is to change this code so that, so that what we're going to do is we've initially set our R0 to have the address x4000 let's say and we'll make our R3 R, um, let's say to hold the address x5000 and when we come to this point here and what we will do is we will start off with our r2 assign the value zero we'll first thing that we will do here is we will get r1 to hold the memory contents of whatever is there in uh, address that is in register r0 whatever R0 is holding. In this particular example, it's going to be 4000. So we'll give it that input and we will go through this motion. So when we come out of this, R2 has the result. So when R2 has the result, I'm going to take what is in R2 and I'm going to store the value of R2. So this is our initialization, if you will. So this is our one step, our second step, which is this step. And I'm going to make them divide like that and this is my step where I'm going to take the result that is in R2 and I'm going to put it in the memory contents of the register whatever R3 is holding as the address and so now I've stored the result but I want to repeat this step for the next element which is at 4001 so at this point I'm simply going to take my R R um, so let's look at our registers R0 and increment it by 1 and also while I'm at, at it I'm going to increment my R3 by 1 also so, so that I can get to the next two locations uh, next location and the result will go at the next location now I want to know whether I have to go back or not so I could have done it a couple of different ways. I could look if look and see if R0 has become 4009 here and then if it has become 4009 or it became in this case 4010A, 4008A, then I would quit otherwise I would go back. Another way to do it is to add another count here and we will use a count as a mechanism to do this where we will use a count let's say R4 is my count and R4 has the value um, 10 to start with so I'm going to put 10 in R4 so that will be our counter to say if we have more work to do or not so here we're going to decrement R2 uh, sorry R4 
and R4 assign the value R4 minus 1 because we just finished one job and then we're going to ask the question is R4 0 and if the answer is yes it is 0 then we are done. If it is not zero, we're going to go back and repeat this whole process again. So we're going to go right here between these two statements and repeat this process. So when we go back, we will have a different value of a different number we're going to load and we're going to repeat this process. So let's write some code to see whether we can how this works. And so we'll first um, get our LC3 tools going and I'm going to um, start off with the code that we already wrote, which is this code, um, which we previously wrote. And I'm going to open a file which we which has the uh, code that we previously wrote. Um, it should be in my recordings. That's my recordings, LC3 debugging. Um, this was the count once code we wrote before, so I'm going to load that. Um, no, cancel. I'm going to load that program. Open file, open file, and let's go to our recordings. Come on, come on. Debugging, count once. So this was the code, and I'm going to save this as a... I'm going to take this file, I'm going to copy the contents of it, and I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to call this, uh, let's go one step back here, let's call this um, an arrays in LC3. Let's call this LC3 arrays as a folder. We're going to put a f here, uh, we'll call this array count once and we'll save it but I'm gonna paste that code there so we'll count the number of ones in a given input array and we're gonna input is a not number but numbers 10 numbers at 4000 and output is number of ones in input array uh, each element of my input array of input array stored at x 5000 so our code this is the code we wrote before so we're gonna uh, modify it so here are my two steps which are my clear input and this is my store result. So I'm going to keep this part intact. This was the block where we said this is my block of code. So this is my block that f finds or counts ones in R2, sorry, R1. And so this is where the block ends, end of block. And so what I'm going to do is I will um, move this line. Let's leave this line here for now. We're going to um, start off by looking at our pseudocode that we wrote. And the pseudocode um, was right here so i'm going to use the pseudo code as my basis so i'm going to add a few instructions up here uh, notably i'm gonna i already have this pointer to input which is 4000 so i'm going to add another pointer to my output and in fact i'm not going to call it pointer any anymore i'm going to call this the out array and i'm going to call this the in array because that's where my inputs and outputs are. Input array and output array is. So this is my in array. 
which I'm going to get into R0 and I'm going to do another LD into R3 which is going to hold my out array. So I have both of those and I'm going to do my and R4 R4 pound 0 which is my uh, sorry pound 0 followed by an add R4 R4 pound 10 so that will get the R4 to have the value 10 and now I am going to move up here and this store should really be a store of R it can't be to the it will be R3 with a zero now because I'm not storing it to X4, 3000, 4000, I'm storing to X4, 5000 plus whatever, 5000 5, plus whatever it is. I'm just going to put 5000 X for now or 5000 star for now. And the input is coming from that because the first time around, as we will see, it will be 5000, next will be 5001 and so on. So the rest of my code is all this magenta stuff that I have here. So I'm going to take my um, take my result, which I already stored here. This is a stored result here. And then I'm going to now do my step, which is I'm going to take R0 and add 1 to it. So add R0, R0 pound 1 to it. And I'm going to add R3 r3 pound one to it which is which are basically these two steps here and i'm gonna add r4 r4 pound minus one to it and now i've decremented it i'm gonna ask the question is r4 equal to zero if the if it's if it's still positive then i need to go back so where do i go back i'm gonna go back to i'm gonna say there are uh, a loop if you will and the loop is my array loop I'm gonna call this an a loop because it's looping around the array for data so I'm gonna go all the way up here and I'm going to get exactly here and this is my loop which is this point right here is my loop I'm going back there so now we have all of it properly set out um, let's fill this guy which is a dot fill with an X thousand and let's build it um, it says there's a problem I call it an a loop so that's really an a loop so let's save it let's build it again so it's successful um, now I don't want to uh, type in all those numbers so I'm gonna create another file here um, this new file I'm gonna create is gonna hold my uh, I'm gonna call this uh, is this is my input inputs input array if you will dot asm so i'm going to save that and here i'm going to do a dot org and i'm going to put it at x5000 and i'm just going to write my inputs for now i'll make it a simple input um, so that i'm going to put an, a dot fill here the first one will be an x8 thousand the second one will be a dot fill with an x8001 and i'm going to repeat these these things and i'm just going to modify them in just a second so we'll do a bunch of inputs here so there's that input two more inputs two more inputs so that's six inputs two more inputs it's eight and two more inputs and I'm gonna make my last one just for because we said that we that's the example we looked let's make that FFFF and for now I'm just gonna leave them like this um, and I'm gonna do a dot and we can try other inputs as we go along so we'll save this we'll build this and now let's open the let's open the file that we um, Let's open the assembly file, which is our array count of ones, and let's assemble it, go to our simulator, and, and I'm gonna now run my simulation. So
go into the simulator and uh, actually let's load both of the ones so let's open the gets let input array so input array is stored um, right there. and then we're gonna go and open our count once and this is a code which is comes and I'm gonna do black box testing and run this code and run and if all well it should end here if I have a bug code I may have an infinite loop but right now it ended there I'm gonna go to x 5000 and see where I have my answers and my answers at x 5000 are um, I'm afraid I obviously is wrong so let's go back and get to the drawing board open the file my inputs are this is my array my input will be coming at from 4000 so let's save that. assemble it let's go open our other file which is our array comes and assemble it let's run the simulator again and reinitialize our machine let's open our array and hopefully this down it should be at 4000 and open a program which is at which is there and take point still at the point and we'll say run. and when it runs go look at 5000 whether it stored our information or not and so there it is and that's our information there's one two one two one two one two and the last one five thousand sixteen so our code works as expected so let's let's recap what we learned uh, what we saw in this simple example is that an array is a collection of items so this is what we call as an input array and this is this is where we're storing our output array and in this particular example every item in our example in this array is each item so the data type of each item each item is of the same data type which is one which is an unsigned in our case it doesn't really matter in lc3 they're all signed so they're all signed 16-bit integers so we can extend this and we will extend this slightly by taking a different version of this uh, so i want to modify the problem statement just so, just a little bit to make this seem a to drive across the idea that we can have a collection of items and the collection of items need not be just integers. So I'm going to change my problem statement slightly. My problem statement now becomes I have a set of inputs but these inputs are what we call as records that is we have a number we have an input like x8000 here and this is our array of this let's call this input of records and what we want is we want the associated in result of this which is one right next to it and this is our second input which is 8001 let's say and we want its result to be right here next to it and so on till we get to our last element which let's say it happens to be f f f f and we want the result associated with it to be right next to it which is in this case a 16. now i want to think of this whole thing as one element the second one here is one element as well and so we have to still have 10 elements but these 10 elements so for us an element now is a record of 
two fields or attributes. We have one attribute which is the number, which is the input attribute and the output attribute. And the output is simply the count and the input is just a number. So how would our code change if I had to do this? So first off, we realize that we don't have two separate locations we're storing these things at. We're storing everything at the same, uh, in, the, in a location that is adjacent to the input itself. So let's modify our code to be able to do this. So I'm going to rewrite the code, but this time I'm going to take this code and modify it. So let's go back here and let's rewrite this code. So I'll copy all of this code and I'm going to change the problem statement. So let's create a Let's save this, let's create a new file, and this will be in the same location. I'm gonna call this array record counts, count once. So now our input, the problem statement is slightly different. So I'm gonna program to count the number of ones in a given input. So the given input um, count the number of ones in each records input attribute and store it in its output attribute. In other words, I no longer have 10 numbers at, at x3000, I have 10 records at x4000 and my output is simply update each record with counts. So our code now doesn't need an output array, so I'm gonna skip this output array. So we no longer have an output array, we just have an input array. And this input array is now holding all our elements. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna change our code so that when we update, so this is our store, we store with respect to zero still because zero is our, our zero still points to the record, but we store it at one like we did before. And now we no longer need our in register R3. So we're going to take this line off. And when we want to go to the next record, we're going to in increment it by two. So increment by two to go to next record. So now what that does is every time I'm moving, every time I finish one of these, when I finish one of these, I'm gonna move by two to the next one. When I finish one of these, I'm gonna move to the next one. So it's always a plus two, plus two is what I'm doing. So let's go here and see if this code does what we want it, to, want it to do. So now we save this, except our data needs to change also because the data is now different. So we're gonna uh, first assemble this. We're gonna open the file that we had before. So this is the file that we had before, which is my input array. I'm gonna take this array and I'm gonna create a new file. Let's call this an input records I'm going to call this input record array and I'm going to store this but except now each element will have two attributes this is my block word with a pound one that is in other words we're going to store so I'm going to make a note here that says each record has a 
number input and has a number and the count so in other words this is a this is a number and this will be the location where we will put the associated count and it will be the same for each one of them so i'm going to store this i'm going to assemble it and i am going to now go back to my file which i previously loaded so let's go here uh, it's already now loaded nicely we see all of those and we're gonna open our file which is the code file which is this guy right here array rec so i'm gonna run that and again i'm gonna put my halt is still nicely set up at the same location because all we did is change some some variable uh, change some stuff of this but we didn't actually change much other than that um, actually no I will open I open the wrong file I should be opening this one did I open that hmm let's reinitialize the machine let's open our first we'll open our input record array and then we'll open our array rec counts which is this good it has in array and out array and i believe that's what we call them and now i'm going to set my breakpoint here and take this breakpoint off and i'm going to run it and i'm going to go look at memory location x for thousand okay and see that all of the computations have happened this has one that has two that has two that has two and so on all the way up to the last number which has 16 um, let's double check whether our code is correct that's a one and for 8001 it should be a two it appears we have a bug in our code um, so the original data let's check because the first number is 4000 that's the correct one for 8001 8, should get a 2 8000 this guy had an 8001 but it it should have a 2 8001 should have a 2 8001 should have a 2 fffff should have a 10 but we actually messed up our logic here because what we ended up doing, let's go back and open our code, open our file. Uh, this is our array record, record counts. Now we need to stop not at 10, but we need to stop at 20 because our R4 which was the number of elements so let's actually let's do the 10 here and we decrement it by one every time and so we should be processing 10 elements let's this let's check this let's go back here and open Record array, which is this one. Let's reinitialize the machine and open the input record array. It's possible that I did not store it right. Yes, I think there's our bug right there. Our file is wrong. We didn't put block words for the others. So we'll go back here, open the file again, and we did not allocate space for all the other guys so these guys every one of them needs a needs a block word this will be the one for this one there should be one for this one there should be one for this one 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 this one save it assemble it and 
now we're gonna run the simulator let's reinitialize the machine let's open the input record array now we have it properly set up we're gonna open our code which is right here we will set our breakpoint right there and hit the go button once it's done we can go to 4000 and we will see our results there's a one two there's a one right there two right there one two one two one two one and the last one is the 16 which is exactly what we expected um, we can go a little further and see that that's the last element of our array i hope this makes sense i hope you understand how arrays work and that's the end.